Hello and welcome to another episode of the Eclipse Exchange podcast. Today we're joined by two titans of industry, Richard Parkin, chairman of the Eclipse Group, and Tyler Robertson, CEO of Diesel Laptops, the largest distributor of multi-brand diagnostics in the US. We're going to be talking about the repair industry in general, uh, multi-brand diagnostics and the future for those products. Um, it's going to be a, a really good episode. Mm. I'm stepping back on this one and letting one of the titans take the chair. The uh, <laughs> chairman's pulled rank on this one. So uh, we hope you enjoy the episode. Yeah, and we'll, do enjoy. Uh, I'll see you next time. So Tyler, thank you for joining us. Uh, do you want to start by telling us a little bit about yourself, about diesel laptops and what you guys do? Well, first I got to say this, like I'm first time ever been in the United Kingdom, right? And to, to, yeah, to, <laughs> to actually go across the pond and, and visit a company that does what we do, like we're on different continents yep. and our business model was really very uniquely the same. Really similar. Yeah. So I think we've taken a little bit different paths on some things. But at the end of the day, uh, diesel laptops, we're a, we consider ourselves an efficiency company for our customers in the United States. And we always tell customers, because they're like, well, what's that mean? And we're like, hey, we're going to give people great diagnostic tools. We're going to give them training, not only on the tools, but how to fix trucks. We're going to give them a call center with diesel techs and IT pros. Mm. And uh, the, the other missing piece of the puzzle for us has always been we have to have our own repair information and our parts information. because it's our belief when you're working on something, yeah. eventually you need a part to fix it. Yeah. And we want to make that connection quick as yeah. possible yeah. for people uh, instead of the yeah. way it works today. Yeah, get it repaired, vehicle back on the road quick as possible. Yeah, and it's our job really, isn't it? To, to give customers that information and help them through that, that process. Yeah. It, it is, and there's a lot of headwinds. In the United States, there's over 80,000 open jobs for diesel techs, right. and our schools put yeah. out 10,000 a year, and it's mm -hmm. getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. Yeah. And that leads to longer lead times, and yeah. trucks breaking down more often because yeah. they're not being maintained, and yeah. all, all these yeah. things that occur because of that yeah. shortage. And we always say it only gets solved two ways more diesel technicians and more technology. Yeah. And I think technology is actually the winning card in this mm. whole thing. It's really hard to go convince mm. people to be diesel technicians yeah. in today's yeah. world. Yeah. So how did you come about starting diesel laptops? What's your background then? Is it engineering or? Yeah, yeah. So I actually got kicked out of college for bad grades, right? <laughs> so my dad was paying for it. And I'd go home, my tail tucked between my legs. You guys actually got to meet my dad. I brought him on this trip over here to, to the UK. Mm. Um, and I, uh, ironically, him and his brothers had decided to buy a truck dealership. And they knew not much about running a truck dealership. Um, so it was a big learning experience. I got involved at the ground floor and how truck dealerships work and operate. And through the years, they ended up selling that company. I, I went to go work for someone else, got fired from them, went to work for <laughs> someone else. And But I've been in truck, I've been inside truck dealerships my whole career. So I always tell people I had 10 years of paid training to go figure out yeah. this whole truck repair mess yeah. that's going on yeah. in the United States. Yeah. And really, that that's what really led me to see opportunity. And the opportunity yeah. was... You just listen to your customers. And I was at the dealership I can't agree and customers that. were saying, yeah. I can't work on my own stuff. Your shop's yeah. backlogged for two weeks. Yep. This is this is horrible. Yep. Like, what? why is yep. this? And yep. I'm like, man, I, I think people would buy some diagnostic tools. Yep. And they I did. Mean, I think doing what we do is quite difficult, but actually quite easy because, it, like you said, the customer tells you what they need, tell you where the pain is. It's our job to, you know, to, to provide a solution and, to that pain. And yep. so many people miss that, right? Mm. So many times people it's just true. have their product, they're trying to yep. jam it in there. Yep. They right. don't care what the customer says, they're going yep. on with their sales yep. pitch. Yep. And you got to listen to them. Listen and they, to them. they got, trust me, you solve their problems, mm. you're going to make money at yeah. the end of the day. And the customer for life, actually. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. the hero, right? Yeah. Yeah. To them, that's right? right? But you're making them the hero to their customers yeah. or their that's boss. It. Exactly. And that's really what it is. Exactly. You're enabling them to be better to, at their to, job. To, to look good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be good for their customer. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, everything we do is always customer focused. Just yeah. we, anytime we have a new idea, a new product, a new thing, we always start with how does it benefit the person using this? And then we kind of back into like, okay, let's make a thing. Let's yeah. test it out. Can we sell it? What can we sell it for? And we, yeah. we kind of go that route. And yeah. I think that's a better way than a lot of people have technology. They try to jam it into something yeah. and just say, oh, it that's should it. work there. Yeah. It, well, it, it doesn't a lot of it, times, it's right? It's not the right solution. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So we see how well you're doing in the in the US. Obviously, all the all the hype you guys uh, are making on online, et cetera. How do you guys approach sales in a huge continent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that was the problem. I mean, I, you know, honestly, after, and for the audience, like I got a chance to hear how you guys do things. I'm kind of coming out of this like, man, I think we need to try kind of <laughs> kind of some of the stuff Eclipse is doing. <laughs> so I, I, I think we're gonna actually try some of this stuff. Yeah, I already talked to the other execs that are yeah, here with me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we do a little bit different. So, you know, we, we try, United States is huge, right? Huge yes. square miles. Yeah, absolutely. And we tried to have people go out and visit customers. Mm. But man, we can only visit like one oh, or two absolutely. a day. Yeah. And yeah. 
uh, we were like, man, we're going to have to have hundreds of sales reps yeah. around the country to the do log- this thing. The logistics just make your your <sighs> method it, different, it, isn't it? To, it was to so, we do things. It was so tough. And then, it, <laughs> then the other problem was, how am I going to go find a couple hundred sales reps and yeah. train them on diagnostic yeah. tools and trucks? Yep. Like we were like, this is, this is not going to be an easy task. Yeah. So our sales manager came to me one day. Um, actually he was a sales manager at one. It was just my sales guy at the time. Mm. And he goes, Tyler, I got a great idea. He goes, we are never going to do a demo again. We are never going to travel to see a customer again. <laughs> and I think we can sell more of these. I'm like, well, great. Cause how, like, you, yeah. Like what, what, what's your secret sauce Magic here? One. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. Like this is against everything that's ever been done. Yeah. Like in, in our, yeah. in our industry. Yeah. And he said, well, first of all, he goes, you know, diagnostic tools, Tyler, I want you to go out there and just do a bunch of videos. Just take your phone out, hook up the truck and just run through the tests and commands on different trucks. So when a customer says, does it do a regen on a Cummins? I can be like, it does a regen on a Cummins, Mr. Customer. Here's yeah. the YouTube video. Yeah. I don't need to drive out there to show you. The tool's yeah. going to work. Yeah. Uh, so we did that. We made a whole bunch of videos. And ironically, our YouTube channel, and we're in the truck diagnostic space, right? It's got over 8 million views mm, on brilliant. people watching these videos. Yeah. Um, and then we said, look, we have a bunch of customers that love us. Mm. Let's make a referral list. Yeah. So if customers yeah. ask, like, who else has one? I can be like, yeah. oh, call Speak call any them. of these guys. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're all happy. They can be your salesman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And every yeah. single one's like, yeah, actually, the complaint we got was so many customers were calling them. They were like, can you like, <laughs> <laughs> can you tone it down? Yeah. Can you, you know, like, not give my name to so many people? I love you guys, but it's, it's getting ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so we did that. And then the other thing we did, which wasn't done at the time, is we said 30 day money back guarantee. Mm-hmm. So we because we were confident in the products yeah. and confident in our services. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we just said, hey, if that customer gets it and they're not happy with it, them forcing them to keep it is mm-hmm. not going to end it's good for thing. either of us. Yeah. They're going to be online. Yep keyboard warrior in it like we talked about yeah, earlier yeah, yeah, yeah. and bad reviews yeah, and yeah. YouTube videos yeah. and, and the internet today. Um, so we, we went down that route and mm. um, it was a big adjustment for everyone because everyone got really comfortable doing demos, but it really worked out well for us because now, now I could scale. Now I could say, okay, yeah. this works. And when we started hiring people that knew nothing about trucks and nothing about diagnostics, mm. And within 60 days, 90 days, they were, they were off to the races selling a lot of kits. Yeah. So it, it's been a learning experience and it, it's been, I think, how we've had to do it. But we also have a really good marketing team that generates like literally thousands of sales leads every month. Mm, sure. um, it's just a big country, right? So, yeah, so we're trying to now we're kind of looking at it like, man, there's certain customers you just can't reach with video and online marketing and pay-per-click yeah. and yeah. Google shopping. Yeah. How do we how do we get in front of those customers? So yeah. some of the lessons I learned today, I think we're going to take back to the States. <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we have um, obviously with us being a small island, yeah. <laughs> we have the obviously benefit of going out and doing the demonstration. Yeah. And we only have to travel a couple of hours. Uh, generally. Um, and we also then go back to the customer to do some uh, uh, on-site handover training. And then we can obviously back them up with technical support and further courses if they need. How do you guys go about uh, uh, approaching training and, and technical support? Yeah, it's been an evolution. So uh, we're, what, we, what we traditionally do today, as soon as that salesman closes the deal, order gets sent into the production team, we have, a, we have another team that basically calls that customer and says, hey, great, your kit's going to ship today or tomorrow. Let's schedule you for one of our live sessions. So we do multiple live training sessions every single week. Um, And these are some of our experienced trainers that have been there. Uh, We also include in the laptop about an hour's worth of on-demand training. They can do at any time. Mm -hmm. We actually made a little launcher program. So they don't actually like click icons on the desktop. They have to like our launcher shows up and right away it's like watch the video. So we tried to push that on them. Um, And then we opened up training centers. So at first I, I wanted these training centers because we thought, I thought, I was like, people actually need help on diagnosing. They don't need help with the tool. They need help like, <laughs> yeah. how do I do electrical? Bit, how do yeah. I do after yeah. treatment, yeah. hydraulics, yeah. HVAC, yeah. like all yeah. these other systems. Yeah. Um, but what I come to find out is actually some of the most popular courses are actually the software courses, <laughs> because, yeah. which yeah. surprised me. Like people yeah. are paying me money to come mm. to courses. I'm like, we're giving it away for free. <laughs> like you just go to these things. But um, it's really worked out well. So we got we got training facilities now in Dallas, Chicago, Atlanta, South Carolina, and there'll be there'll be more coming up. And um, I've always said, for me, it's not. I don't I don't care to make money on those things. Mm. Like I just want them breaking even. Mm. And if I have training centers across the country, mm. people are coming to my training classes, learn about mm. electrical. They're gonna learn about diesel laptops, and they're gonna call me when I need something. So I, I almost view it as like a marketing extension <clears throat> more than anything else. I think we have luxury in this country, don't we, of a of a, a, a tighter uh, geography, yeah. really. Uh, so we can, you know, just the way we, we do it. So we travel to the, our customer uh, to give them a demonstration eye to eye in front yeah. of them. Uh, and then training will 
again travel them to to give them the training on, on site. Um, but we are starting to use more and more so um, the, the the online uh, connectivity. Um, because um, I think human brain can only take so much in over in, in, in a session. Um, but, you know, with technical support where uh, customers call in and they're literally having a mini tutorial while they're speaking to our guys. Sure. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's interesting. A very similar yeah. uh, way of doing things. Well, even even again, like we're on different sides of the pond. The, the tech support's the same way. We just say, yeah. like, have the have the heart of a teacher here when people call in. Yeah. Just yeah. don't so, do yeah. it for them. Yeah. Like, yeah. show them. like Show them how to do it. This yeah. is how you run the command. Yeah, this yeah. is where the repair information yeah, is, yeah, yeah. right? And we do that because we all want to make them more empowered and yeah. be more successful at their yeah, jobs. And so. trust me, I think we both get plenty of tech support calls. We'd yeah. all like to reduce it by at least absolutely. one absolutely. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so it's our interest that they know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel? Obviously, we've seen your podcasts and your feeling about um, uh, sort of level and industry training for or industry standard for diesel techs. We have the same issue over here. How do you feel about there being such a shortage of technicians and what are you doing to sort of help that? And yeah, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge problem um, in the United States. And it, it's a, I mean, there's so many reasons it happens. I could probably list off a bunch of them. Um, but at the end of the day, people aren't going into this profession. And I really look at it like I'm a parent and I'm like, man, I, I really need to be talking to my kids about the trades, right? Like not yeah. everyone needs to go to a four year degree. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. the United States, we're sitting at almost $2 trillion in student loan debt. Yeah. Uh, 40% of the students that start school don't finish. Mm -hmm. So there's just all yeah. these, there's just a big mess in the United Absolutely. States that's getting yeah. worse and yeah. worse and yeah. worse every single year. I think we're all different. A lot of people have practical skills uh, that they'd be a lot better off uh, using uh, rather than sitting in a classroom that yeah. they're just not suited for. So I don't, do they have the show Dirty Jobs in the United, over yeah. here in the United Kingdom? Okay, so it's a show in the United States. Uh, it was the number one cable television show. There's a gentleman okay. by the name of Mike Rowe. Okay. So he would go do these dirty jobs. Like yeah. he'd go um, concrete chip out of a yeah. mixer drum or he'd go take a roadkill off the road. But he's, yeah. he really became like a proponent in the United States of yeah. just talking about this whole skills gap thing. And I think he says it right. It's not that we don't want people to have education. We want them to have the right education. And yeah. in the United States, so many people just tell their kids, go to a four-year year, go to a four-year yeah. and they're like, for yeah. what? And they yeah. come up with That's a four-year right. literary one, degree. One blinkered way of doing things. Yeah, it's they, they spend yeah. 200 grand to get a $40,000 a year job. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. you could have went to a tech school for six months and you'd be making about 80 grand right yeah, now. Yeah, and it, it's yeah. it's ridiculous yeah. that it, we're at this point in time, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I, I hate to say this, but it's a huge opportunity for companies like us yeah. because we're providing the resources and yeah, technical yeah, services to allow yeah. them to be more efficient yeah. Yeah. at so the jobs they're in. Problem, really. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and technicians are more reliant on diagnostics or all these uh, tools to do the job now. Yeah, and, you and, can't do the job without and it. And by the way, your trucks are way more advanced than our trucks <laughs> in the United States. Ours, ours look like they're out of the 80s compared to <laughs> some of the stuff I see with you guys and the trailers and, and everything goes yeah. on here with the EBS and the, yeah. just the trailers, like all Very the requirements. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's it's mind-blowing how, yeah. how different it is yeah. Yeah. Uh, over here. So yeah. I, I can't imagine, I, I say the United States today, I can't imagine owning an independent shop having to work on all makes, all models. Yeah. I got no access to training, yeah. no access to diagnostic yeah, tools, no I, access to all. It's like, impossible. Yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. we're just, I think we're both in the same mindset. Yeah. Like, let's go help these people. Like, Absolutely. this, this Absolutely. our industry depends yeah, it, on it companies does. like yeah. us. Yeah. And yeah. equally why the training for obviously these are laptops and Eclipse, the training courses, the advanced courses are so important is you may know how to pick up this diagnostic tool, plug it into the truck. I've got my code. Now what? I don't know anything about our blue systems, yeah, well, EBS. Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah. that's the kind of the problem we see with like telematics. Right. So we're going to give people these tools that show them fault codes and stuff remotely. <clears throat> and at least in the U.S., when we go talk to fleet managers, they're like, well, I don't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. So there's still that missing piece of like connecting humans and repair and telematics. But I go back to what I said earlier. Technology really helps this entire thing. Yeah. We just got to all keep on down that same path to really help improve the industry. Yeah. 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 And technical support for the time zones in the U.S. How do you guys manage? Yeah, we, I mean, we have four time zones, right? Yeah, it's a it's a pain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got so we have 50 people now in a call center. Um, about half of them are diesel techs, half are IT pros. And I'm a I'm a truck industry guy. Like I'm an, I'm an ex service manager and parts manager. Right? I don't I don't know what a software company should look like yeah. and what a tech support department should look like. <laughs> so we're bringing in the right people and we keep iterating up and we keep training and doing those things. Uh, but yeah, we have a lot of hours. We have staggered hours that people come in uh, our Dallas facility because it's in a different time zone. We started to staff employees at that facility now as well. 
Uh, but it's I, I, I got employees in Brazil. I got employees in Michigan. I got employees all over the place now that we're just trying to put up. And I think you're right. And similarly, uh, there's no set way here. There's no uh, a, a program that's that everybody follows in our industry. We're pretty much writing that. Uh, so yeah, so we don't follow uh, the story of how you know we we have to literally make it up as we go along. But for the benefit because we can adapt and change things to suit. Uh, the problem on our customers. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the thoughts I've had is actually <laughs> trying to, you know, convince some of our vendors here, like, let me open up in Australia. Mm. So it's like on the opposite side of the world, mm. I could put a sales center there and and tech and mm. tech support. Yeah, I'm like, oh man, and then you know, hopefully work with Eclipse a little bit. Mm. And I'm like, I think we could offer like around the globe, 24 seven tech support if we had the okay. the right people in the we, right let's locations. Keep talking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it would work though, right? Like, it, you know, like yeah. it wouldn't be that much yeah. of an investment. Exactly. We'd have some people yeah, there, absolutely. and I think we could, I think we yeah. make this thing yeah. work. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time outside North America. So I'm excited just to be here in Europe. Um, okay, so uh, the perception of, if we move on to the, the actual multi-brand uh, diagnostics as a, as a product, sometimes the perceptions are a little bit off about what these tools are, are capable of, what they can do, what they cover. Uh, do you want to talk us about how, what that's like in the US is dealing with customer expectations? So I feel like I'm watching the same film strip over and over and over again. So what I would explain is like automotive. Everyone knows there's multi-brand automotive tools. Mm. Like I can go to my local auto parts store mm. in my yeah. Walmart. Take your pick. And pick your pick, right? Yeah. And you can't tell the difference yeah. between any of them, yep. right? Which one's better? I don't, I don't know. Um, in the United States, I would say like five years ago is when people started to realize, wow, there's multi-brand tools that do almost everything the dealership tools do with one interface and one box. And that was like mind blowing to people. Mm. And that, that's really where a lot of our business started to take off at Diesel Laptops. And then I knew nothing about off-highway. Like, I'm a truck guy. So, uh, you know, our vendor's like, hey, you should sell some of this off-highway. I'm like, what, what do I know? Like, what, how many cables are there? What do they plug in? What mm-hmm. engine? Like, I knew nothing. Mm-hmm. So we were fortunate to have an employee in tech support at the time that worked for off-highway equipment dealer. And he's like, we're like, hey, you want to go hook this thing up and connect to some things and see what happens? And he went out and he came back. He's like, man, these are these are some really good tools. Like, I didn't know these existed. I'm like, I didn't either. Is this a thing? Yeah. So I can say now, um, today at Diesel Laptops, some of our biggest customers are off highway, primarily off highway customers. And it's, it's a lot of it's been the equipment rental companies yeah. where they're like, hey, we got you know, 4,000 locations and we need a, we need a laptop yeah. in each. And you're like, mm. okay, yeah. let's, yeah. let's, let's talk. Yeah. And that's it. And we, and we were saying earlier, yeah. earlier that moment. probably every other sale is now uh, off highway. Off highway. Yeah. So, yeah. In some way. More, more than, yeah. more than 50% of our kits yeah. on our yeah. dealer level yeah. tools have off highway license on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we tell repair shops all the time, like, man, you want to extend your business? You're already working on a diesel caterpillar in a truck. Mm-hmm. It's really not that different than that Absolutely. diesel caterpillar and that yeah, dozer exactly. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Using the software and a little bit of help and yeah, you can yeah. expand your business. Yeah, exactly yeah. so. All these machines are, it seems like they're just a few years behind and catching up with what's on the trucks anyway now. You, they all have DPFs. They all have uh, blue. Everybody wants it turned off. But, <laughs> uh, you know, they all need require a force region. They all go into limp mode. It's the same issue. So our biggest struggles with like marine, ag, and off-highway is that people don't believe an option exists. They still have the yeah. mindset <laughs> that... Yeah. Only the dealer has this. I can't go anywhere else. It can't Nothing else could possibly work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, I saw mm. this with truck. I mm. saw this automotive. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, again, the same film strip over and over yeah. again. It just yeah. takes time and educating the audience mm. and letting them know. And, yeah. you know, it, it happens. And yeah. we want to make sure we're in the front of all that. Yeah, sure. Sure. And uh, uh, what I love about the, the technical support as a, as a salesman for Eclipse, as somebody who supplies multi-brand diagnostics, we always have that answer if the multi-brand tool that you're using is just missing that last little piece. Oh, we run across all the time. There's like two big problems we run across in the States. One is like all the pirated bootleg software out there. And then the other one we're having out there is just kind of like all the knockoffs and, yeah. and, and things that are out there. Yeah. And um, like there, there's some tools out there. Like I can tell you when I first started selling these tools, I started selling the Bosch tool. And I was like, oh, this is great. It's going to work. And we sent it out. And I can tell you, I think I sold 15. I think 14 of them got returned to me. <laughs> right. And I was like, well, I'm not going to make an upset customer. And I had yeah. to swap them out with the, the right tool yeah. In, yeah. in that case. Yeah, right. Exactly. And they were like, cool, this is this That's is much better. this is much better mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And it's it's not just the tool, though. And we, we keep telling us to customers, anyone can sell you a tool. Yeah. And this is there's a reason we're charging more for our product. And yeah. I, I know we do. And I, I know yeah, you guys absolutely. do, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's because you're going to get world class support. Absolutely. And we're going to take care of you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. And those are huge mm. things that indeed. people don't realize. That makes a difference between getting the vehicle back on the road. Yeah. Now. yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't, and they don't realize it until yeah. they're in that situation. Yep. And they're like, well, who do I call for help? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yep. There is nobody. Mm-hmm. Fill out the form in Absolutely. three days. They'll get yeah, back to you. That's right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, my uh, I suppose education in the in the diagnostics industry for the last six or seven years with Eclipse has been that you can have the the best after brand aftermarket uh, tool uh, available, but it's the ne- the knowledge of the person using it and who you're buying it from yeah. are the two main uh, uh, points to whether or not this is going to work for you. It, yeah. it 100, it 1000 <laughs> percent is that way. Uh, I, I know that lesson. I was telling them a story earlier today when I did my first multi brand tool and. I, I couldn't figure it out and I, I needed help. And once you knew some things, yeah. you you know, it was no problem. But it all goes back to the fact that what you guys do is really right. Like you guys, when you don't deliver a tool, it's just like ship it in the mail, here you go. Like you guys are on site, <laughs> yeah. here it is. Yeah. Let's walk you through how this thing works. And that just sets the tone for them yeah. to be like, okay, this, this company has my back. That's right. Yeah. We, we, we're doing two things. We want a long-term customer. We want them to come back again. Uh, we want to start them off right uh, because it's our reputation as well. So, yeah. uh, you know, we, we, it, we're incentivized to, you know, for the customer to understand yeah. the product and use the, use it to its best. Yeah. Uh, it makes sense for us. Yeah, we. I think where we lose out on sales is customers look at our tool and be like, oh, it's eight, nine, ten thousand dollars And like, I can go buy this Chinese tool for 3,500 bucks, oh, yeah. right? Like we, yeah. we lose those sales. But most times those customers come back and are like, mm-hmm. okay. It didn't yeah. work. You were right. <laughs> you yeah. were right. Buy yeah. cheap, buy twice. Yeah. 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 yeah like, there's a particular vendor in the United States that's advertising. We have this off highway tool and it works on Bobcat. Well, you find out it only works on like Bobcat with some engine they made 20 years ago, but they don't yeah. tell you that, yeah. right? Yeah. They just say it works with Bobcat. On yeah. yeah. Like yeah. none of the details are there, but it's like that for yeah. every single model they list. Yeah. And we're like, come on, guys. Like, this is just, you're just lying to customers at this point. You got it. You, yeah. you can't do that to them. You're just going to destroy your reputation. Yeah. yeah. That won't last long. Yeah. What are the, you mentioned obviously counterfeit tools, and that's something that we have a, a not an issue, but it's something that we come up against um, people looking for alternatives. And as you said, mentioning uh, cheaper alternatives. Uh, what are the potential risks uh, in the US, in the UK, if you are looking at counterfeit? dealer tools, aftermarket tools. Yeah, I mean, I I can't speak about the UK, but Mm -hmm. I I mean, I can speak about the United States. Mm -hmm. So first of all, like you can go on uh, Craigslist, Facebook groups, eBay, Mm -hmm. all these dark websites, and you can go buy, they'll be like, oh, fully loaded, dealer level two tool, Mm $2,000. And these guys get them and they they found out a couple things real quick. One, it's all old versions of software. Two, it doesn't have everything on there it said it did. And the ones that are on there usually don't work. And usually that seller's long gone about a mm-hmm. month later. And so is their money. And they got an expensive yeah. paperweight. Yeah. So honestly, the pirated software ends up being a lot of the reasons customers are like, okay, I tried that. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. Let me go, let me go back, talk to the company that can actually yep. help me with these things. So um, it's it's a problem in the US. Mm-hmm. I'm glad some manufacturers like Pack Car really lock their software down. Mm-hmm. They can't they can't do stuff yeah, there. But I think a lot of brands now have done this. Online. So it's online um, yeah. connectivity, uh, which does, has helped uh, the issue. Um, so they just can't do what they took because there were some counterfeits that would work up to a certain date, but yeah. that date now is so far far gone uh, to do anything <clears throat> um, serious. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got to connect, and of course, um, you just can't acquire the 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 proper uh, uh, product so yeah. uh, multi brand solution does majority of that uh, throughout different brands it yeah. it does and I feel bad for these people because <clears throat> they're just they just don't know yeah. right and no, they they think they're like the oh, perception the, the, the they, perception well, yeah, I'm exactly. saving money it's, oh, is, it's yeah, the same exactly. thing and a lot of times yeah. they talk to me like oh yeah it's yeah. the same yeah. thing yeah. as yeah. is what they're selling over to Clips yeah. and you're like yeah really? yeah sure yeah. Yeah, and they always come back. They always end up coming back and, and are having to purchase uh, the, the right solution. Um, and I suppose the, one of the questions we wanted to ask is sort of the differences between, the, and something I don't know much about, is the differences between the US vehicles and maybe the, the European vehicles that we are having to work on. And what do you guys, uh, if anything, on technical support get asked about the most? Over here, it's always EBS, AdBlue, EBS, AdBlue. What do you guys come up yeah, against? Yeah, yeah, we, we don't have EBS in the United yeah. States, right? Mm-hmm. So we don't, we don't get asked that question. But it's always emission related. It's emission related systems. It's engine related systems and just electrical in general. Mm -hmm. So like we have an electrical one class and these students that come in, we used to give a pretest and it was basic. Like what's Ohm's law? How do you measure the resistant? Like it was like 101 stuff. 80% 80% of the incoming students failed it. Yeah. And these were not like mm. new technicians. These are mm. guys coming in being like, I've been doing this for 20 years. I know yeah. what I'm doing with a multimeter. Yeah. <laughs> they, they do not. So mm. um, that's been our big push to them is like, you need to learn these things because if you look at the future, 
of where things are going, right? EVs, robots yep. driving, robots yep. driving trucks, yep. you know, all these alternative, like, what do you think that is? That's, that's, that's all these skills you need to learn over here, uh, to really be successful in your shop environment. Um, so yeah, it, there's, there's differences over there. I, I, I've been a couple of European trucks over here and I, I've known this for a while. You guys are way more advanced. <laughs> like, they're like, I go in there, I'm like, man, these are like spaceships compared to, <laughs> compared to some of the trucks we got in the United States. Yeah. Well, so. it's definitely more complicated and more headache uh, yeah. for us. I think yeah. that's the tool. Yeah. 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 Um, I, uh, and one thing I, I wanted to say is, I don't know if you guys have the, the same problem. Um, some of the older generations don't seem to want to learn about the electrics. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Don't bother showing me. You know, sometimes I'll go out to a, a customer. I'll have five guys there, four want to look at it. And there's one or two guys there who, I'm, look, I'm, I'm beyond this. I'm not interested. Just yeah. show them yeah. the guys. Well, it's good to know that's not just an American problem. <laughs> you say that, right? So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the hard part in the States is in, in the, we, we, I call, I'll jokingly call them like the no hair, gray hairs. Like yeah. they're, they're all these yeah. guys that have been there for a while. Yeah. You know, they're retiring. And, you know, the fact is, if I was that situation, I probably wouldn't want to pick that stuff up either. I'd be like, you know what, sure. let me keep doing my thing. I got yeah. three years left on the clock yeah. and, and I'm out of here. Yeah. But we, we, you know, I, I've experienced uh, of people that, who are saying that, oh no, I'm too old. I'm retiring soon. And then the guys that have picked it up and gone with it and we give them the training, we give them the support, the right tool and they extend their retirement. You know, they're getting on so well with it. They yeah. can just keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's a couple of principles you have to wrap your head around and it just, it's like any other skill. It takes a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of training mm -hmm. and a little bit of practicing mm -hmm. and you can get pretty good and pretty efficient at those things. Like one of the advanced tools we're really starting to push the United States is oscilloscopes. Mm -hmm. So in the automotive industry in the U S you can use an oscilloscope to figure out an engine misfire, an electrical problem, a vibration problem, all these really cool things. And, uh, nobody in the United States and the heavy truck industry knows how to use them. No, <laughs> so, exactly. so we launched these oscilloscopes, um, but we really realized, Hey, we need to have great training in order for mm. these things to work. Mm. Uh, and things were going good there. And then supply chain shortages and chip shortages. Mm. And we're like, we can give you six oscilloscopes in 2022 for your customers. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, we'll figure this out. But yeah, there, there is the opportunity, I think for people to learn at these classes that both of us offer. And, yeah. uh, you're, you're never, it's never too late to teach an old dog, new tricks, new tricks right? Exactly, yeah. But you definitely can. They just have to have the right mindset. If being forced to do it by their boss or their employer yeah. they, they're not going to do it but the ones that raise their hand and say yeah i i, I want to learn this mm. you can pick it up yeah we're close to seeing, you mentioned obviously electric vehicles, we're close to seeing more and more uh, electric vehicles being released. I know, Richard, you told me the other day about an electric truck, uh, stuff, projects in Germany that we were discussing uh, in a previous episode. How are we, both question to both, I suppose, mm -hmm. how are we preparing for alternative fuel vehicles? Yeah, you want, you want to take one first? Yeah, sure. Well, I, I think certainly the product that we sell um, are well ahead and covering it. So however it's going to play out, whichever alternative fuel systems uh, are going to win, um, uh, uh, then find it, it'll be on the software and they, they already are um, systems on there and um, they continue to be. Um, but where that's going, Who's going to win? Uh, it's an interesting thought at the moment because, yeah, you've got electric vehicles, um, hydrogen, and, of course, that old, um, you know, problem of storage of hydrogen. Um, but interesting now to see perhaps the development of hydrogen on demand, uh, you know, a system that's producing hydrogen as it's using it. Now, that's interesting. You know, that, that kind of works really, doesn't it? You know, still combustion engine um, uh, because there's only uh, so much uh, raw material to make batteries. Uh, and we've got the, you know, in commercial vehicles, the weight uh, problem that a that the electric vehicles suffer with, you know, yeah. the heavier it is, the more batteries you need, the more batteries are heavier. Uh, um, so it doesn't pan out. Yeah, so we we got the same a lot of similar views. So like in the United States, uh, Nikola, who's a startup, who by the way I yep. think is totally going to fail. Right. But but Nikola, they they came out there. It's a Nikola truck, but it's really not Veco with a Nikola yep. badge on the yep. front, right? Uh, but they came out with theirs and traditionally in the United States an over the road truck, um, you know, 18 wheeler sleeper. I mean, they're, they're clocking in about 16, 17,000 pounds on the high end. Um, these, these new ones, these ones from Nikola weigh 30,000 pounds, mm -hmm. right? So they're not as big as sleepers yeah. and, and all these things. So I, I think the United States also has the hydrogen distribution problem <laughs> where mm -hmm. we're just so big and there's, you got to yeah. put a lot of stops in it. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't even have an EV grid that can get you like the fueling stations today and EVs, you know, Tesla has been trying to bang this out for, for a decade now. 
Um, so I, I think it's going to be a while before the EVs come yeah. out there. I yeah. think uh, I will say uh, Navistar uh, International Trucking Engine, they invited me to their EV center uh, up in Michigan a couple months ago. So we went up there. Um, I can tell people I was actually surprised when I, I, I thought it, when you open the hood, there'd be nothing there. It was full. <laughs> I'm like, well, what? why do you guys have stuff up here? What's going on? And there's this other big contraption like bolted to the side of it. I'm like, what? What is going on? He's like, well, we got to have a thermal cooling unit cooling, to keep yeah, things cool. Yeah, yeah. We still have a radiator. We still got HVAC. Yeah, and now yeah, we have to have yeah. a different type of air compressor yeah. that's electronic because yeah. we don't have an engine to mount it to. Yeah. Like, there's all these things that, yeah, the engine's gone, mm. but there is a huge yeah. opportunity still that's going to exist there. Okay. It, it's just going to be, at least in the U.S., when a new when a new truck comes out, they're giving anywhere from a three-year to five-year bumper-to-bumper warranty on it and mm. saying, don't bring it anywhere. Yeah. But I think you're still going to see it in collision shops. Yep. Uh, I think the tow truck guys are going to have to figure out how to deal with EVs, uh, emergency responders. Like you get an EV truck flipped on its side, mm. like can oh, I yeah. can I can I use the jaws mm. of life and I got to kill myself? Mm. Like they, they, you know, there's yeah. things there's there's a lot to yeah. this beyond just. Hey, in diesel's gone, yeah. batteries in, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be a huge opportunity yeah. for yeah. for everybody. Yeah, exactly. So, how do you think this will change the heavy? duty diagnostics industry. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say this is okay. This is a little far fetched. All right. But I think, um, so imagine, so let's say EV takes off and we have all these EV charging stations all over. Well, I don't think people realize is all these EV charging stations are mini computers. Yeah. They got capacitors, Absolutely. they got ECMs, they got all these things. Yeah. Well, who makes diagnostic tools and, and support these Absolutely. things? Right. So exactly. I look at them like, man, I think we're not going to be diagnosing yep. the trucks but all these fueling stations all over the place as well or charging stations. Um, so I, I look at it as a huge opportunity and the, like the big one I, I talk about a lot of time too is robots driving trucks. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, more sensors, radar, Absolutely. more systems. wires, like Just more system, system, more yep. ECMs. Like this is right up our alley. Of course it is. Yeah. So people are saying, what are you going to do when the combustion engine goes? Well, actually, well, great, because there are so many more systems uh, on future uh, vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we'll both be like gone to dust before all the diesel mm. engines are gone. When you talk about, you know, off highway stuff, you talk about bus, you yeah. talk about all these mm. other things. Yeah. It's yeah. it's going to be a hot minute. Yeah. Even, even if people believe that it doesn't need diagnostics anymore, yeah. which they totally yeah. do, they probably need yeah. more. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's a good time. And the interesting thing is that there are companies uh, box ticking now uh, in having, say, off-highway, electric off-highway vehicles. And then we go to places there's no power. They're charging them with the diesel generator. Yeah. You know, like, well, seriously, just because they tick it, a box to say we've got electric vehicles, you know. So it, uh, it, oh, uh, it is going to take so long to put, you know, at least in the U.S., just to put in the charging stations themselves yeah. is a monumental task that our government's throwing billions at. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we got to have an infrastructure to actually like make enough power to power yeah, all exactly. these things. Where's the power coming yeah, from? Yeah, so exactly. there's there's just yeah. so much things to work out yeah. here. Yeah. Um, and I, I know, in, again, in the U.S., state governments and federal governments are throwing just mm. billions of dollars mm. and trying to mandate no more diesel engines by this mm. year and all these mm. things. But it, it's going to be a while. It through. <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 I remember in, in our case when it was Barack Obama, like 08 or something, he he came out and said, oh, by, you know, we're going to do a thing by this year. All mm. things will be EV. Like, mm. I, I think that day's already come and gone. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it just they always have high ambitions. Mm. And hey, I want clean air. Yeah, I think we all do. Yeah. I, I like I like the fact that we have clean air now, cleaner air now mm. than we do today. But the U.S. is still the second largest polluter in the U.S., mm. right, only mm. behind China. Mm. So we still have a long ways to go yeah. to, to help help this whole thing. But sure. progress to yeah. be made. We have a similar target in the UK, don't we? Is it 2040? No more diesel engine cars? Yeah, we call that actually 2030. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, think, I think California's like 2035 yeah. or something like that. And you only think that because it's so unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, really, that's well, we're going to have so to backtrack. So, we're yeah. going to have yeah. to. So like in California, yeah. for the truck manufacturers, they have a sliding scale. So like next year, like for every nine diesels, they have to sell one EV mm. and like the next year yeah, it has to yeah, be like eight to two. Yeah. Like they're, they're forcing yeah. them to do yeah. it. So yeah. people keep saying it ain't going to happen. Mm. Government, at least in the United States is yeah, going to make it happen. happen. Like there's, there's no doubt they'll, yeah. they're going to keep throwing money at it. Yeah. Begs the question, if you take all the other issues with electric vehicles away and supporting electric vehicles training, if, if we're already struggling and all of these technicians are struggling with one, there's a shortage of technicians two, they're struggling with training with it. What happens when it all goes electrical? If it all goes electrical, how on earth are you going to keep up with it? I mean, they need to understand high voltage. They understand mm. what can kill them and what can't. Mm -hmm. They understand how to be safe on these things. There's new tools you need. You got to be proper glow. I yeah. mean, there, there's, there's things they're going to have to learn. And I think every EV manufacturer that I've ever, that we talked to, we talked to a bunch because they're all needing help with support networks and diagnostic tools. Like, mm. you know, there are these small startups and like, what do I do if I'm in California, my headquarters and my truck's in New York city, 
how do I, how do I help that customer fix his thing without towing it all the way back to California? Yeah. So they're starting to think through these things yeah. and try to understand what they can do. Um, so yeah, tons of opportunity out there. We just keep telling people today, get really good at electrical and also get really good at after treatment. <laughs> Those are going to be around for a long time, mm -hmm. but that's the key for your business to succeeding. Yeah. If you want to keep passing this thing to the, yeah. to the next person yeah. and having business. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, guys. For well, thank you for Tyler for, for joining yeah. us. First, thanks for coming to see yeah. us all this way. Uh, it's been really good. Yeah, to meet you yeah. And, uh, and let's keep uh, keep working together. Yeah, yeah no, so I, I yeah. feel like I found my brother like across the ocean that I never knew I had. So this, this has been great. It's been great here. You guys have been very hospitable. Great, um, well, really, love seeing everything. Yeah, really good for you to come over and see us. It's, yeah, uh, hey, if really you ever get to the United States, love to have you swing I'm by. Gone, then. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thank Do you. Have you a right. nice little trip planned? I think. Uh, you know, probably, probably. Yeah. You know, I, I'm finally at the point in my company where I felt like I had to be there 24 seven because we had so many employees were growing so fast. Now I brought in great employees. We got strategic yeah. plans. Like we, I start to feel like we're, I feel like a grown up company now. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I can take a week off and yeah. things are going to be good. okay. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I could not say that two years ago. No, so exactly. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a little so travel. Both similar yeah, similar. Stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's never here. Australia's <laughs> sounding good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys.